Good evening, Chris. You are on mute, so I don't know if you can hear me. You're after the whole no. introduction, and you're on mute. And I couldn't Excellent. you. And this is why we're late, folks. So when everybody's here from this, this is the reason we're late. This is it. Technical difficulties tonight. I don't know what it is, but I was literally on the far side of you. Uh, <laughs> this was after the best introduction that's ever been done. Yeah, it'll never get better than what I just did. So, <laughs> yeah, well, we'll go again. Uh, it's season four, episode six of the Turnhead podcast. It's deadlock for Dundalk in Oriel Park after a nil-nil with Waterford in a frustrating match where we probably had the majority of the chances. And, you know, Cammy Elliott, Galley, probably at the heart of two of the big moments of that match. I did say no one would have heard me. It wouldn't be the town end unless we had a couple of technical issues getting here tonight. Uh, one would be being on mute, and two, we did have Steph. Now we don't have Steph. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's one of them. Nights. That was the hold up. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's been one of those nights. And it's but... a home game. It's not even like we're traveling from Cork to get the podcast. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been in Dublin for the past two matches and been on the M50, been able to get on and have muted myself. This, tonight I managed to. Uh, Gally, what's your overall thoughts on on that one tonight? Um, I I'm I'm torn between, you know, we haven't we haven't scored again, and that's always going to be a glaring problem. We said this last week, you know, as long as that remains zero on our side, people are going to be absolutely livid every time. But what I got from tonight was probably not so much. Maybe maybe from seventy minutes, sixty minutes on, there was a little bit of bite in us. There's a little bit of mm. oh, we might actually grab a goal here, and unfortunately, we didn't. But I think the performance, I actually think we were better. We were probably slightly the better team overall. You know, we talk about individuals and chances created and, well, chances created for water, more of our goalkeeper making saves. But this is what I was saying last week and the week before. We can handle nil-nil results. Although probably not nil-nil, maybe, I suppose. Probably, probably draw, maybe. It's a score draw. We're probably delighted with tonight's result. But it's a performance. And I think there was a little bit more about us tonight. Not much. I'm not going to say, like, you know, Stevie's kind of, you know, He's, he's up the game now and we're back on track. We're absolutely not mm. back on track. There's some glaring problems, but I thought, you know, without going individuals, I thought, like, you know, we can talk about Annelsey tonight. I thought Louis was excellent tonight. Johnson's come in as well. I thought about Johnson. Johnson was, Johnson was, was the really, really outstanding good. player for me tonight. Really, really good. Really, like, really strong performances, you know, pass the ball, both feet. I've never, I don't think I've seen a Dundalk team pass more with both feet. It's only something I noticed tonight. Maybe it's an obvious thing, but, you know, both players pass with both feet, really comfortable. You know, but I, I, you know, there's there's issues obviously up top. We're not scoring again. Gullen's come off injury. I don't know what the injury's like, but yeah, I, I'm happy, happy enough with probably not so much the result. It, it's the performance. There's a little bit more in the in the second half. So much the first half's pretty boring. I think you know. Yeah. I'll do. I'll be in one or two decent kind of passing uh, routines, but boring enough for first forty five. I think for the first forty five, you're probably thinking that Sam Duran chance. That he had, he, you know, the ball's cut into him. He's he's right in on the keeper, and he kind of puts it high at the keeper. You probably needed to hit that one low yeah. and, and bend it in towards the other corner to to really challenge the keeper. But it was a good it was a good chance. Um, for for me, as I said, it's that Johnson was just a real standout candidate tonight. And um, I actually had to come home and with everything that was wrong with Steph's laptop, I thought it's the perfect opportunity just to double check what age he is. Nineteen. Like he, yeah. he had a lot of composure for a 19 year old, I felt, um, there tonight. But, um, I think for me, the fact that we didn't cough up the big chance for the opposition tonight was good because we've seen that over the past few, maybe, maybe it was the opposition as well. I don't know, but like we, we didn't seem to give them that big one, two chances. Like we probably gave, gave Pats that one big chance, and yeah. um, that they took. Um, last weekend, so to to not really be coughing up that and look a, a bit more, I know you said you know a score draw just for something there, but I I felt we just needed to have have a clean sheet. <laughs> really, Absolutely. maybe it's the keeper in me. Yeah. I was just like, just we need a clean sheet here is the most important thing. What people go um, to automatically is because we haven't scored. I think you know, obviously we don't want to concede hmm. three and score three either, but you know. I think we're. I think people are fixated on the fact that we haven't scored, and it'll, it'll, it'll just continue for the next couple of weeks until we start hitting the ball at the back end. But like you say, we haven't coughed up much. I mean, when Rose pulled off a crack and save, but a kind of a bounce header from Armand you know, yeah. on the first half. But, you know, and he, 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 I don't know if it's the second half. Then he's on a one on one. That's actually the first half as well. But you know, with that it said, you know, I, I think 
I, I call it a boring first half. It just seemed very flat. And I don't know if it's the crowd or... Right, notice there was a, an audible difference, a massive difference in the second half. And I think that's just, as the game went on, I think we I think we probably played for another five minutes. We were robbed of probably two or three minutes of injury time. It was only four yeah, minutes. Yeah, four minutes was, was strange considering it was two big injuries. Like we talk about the ref at some stage. But I think if we'd have played for another three or four minutes, we probably would have grabbed something. But look, we haven't. And, you know, it, we just will go back to this crack. If we haven't scored, it's one in, are we one in 10, one in nine? Well, I don't know what the stat was last week, but it's one from open play anyway. That's all we have at the minute. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, performance-wise, I thought it, we probably have more individual performance to talk about tonight than we've had over the last couple of weeks as well. So, you know, the keeper, two centre-backs. I thought Scott High was excellent going forward tonight as well, albeit, mm -hmm. you know, Gullet hasn't run off him too well. But I, I thought it was some, some really good performance tonight. Not outstanding by any means, but with the exception of maybe the centre-backs. But yeah, yeah, look, it's there's a bit there and... You know, we were sitting here, we said kind of, you know, 1st of April, that's kind of your, your nice little bucket of a couple of games coming up. And, you know, if we can, and I know it's a real cliche, but if we can get that bite for the last 15, 17 minutes, if that we can continue that for maybe 25, 30 minutes of, of a game, you know, even that alone over 90, yeah, it might see us through a couple of games over the next couple of weeks. And you know, I think, you know, it's, it's something to think about. I, I don't think they're out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination. I think there's going to be, I mean, I've, I've seen comments tonight, I, I I wouldn't be as drastic as we were a couple of weeks ago, but I mean, mm -hmm. there there is something there, something definitely that's stiff. That's the stiff. I think with Steph's laptop, <laughs> that Skip Stephen Stephen can uh, can cling to. It probably doesn't have the podge sent off, which I actually missed because I was drinking a cup of oh, coffee. Uh, did you miss it? I missed it. I I happened to puppy coffee down and missed the whole incident. So they so they wanted to take a quick throw and. Page copped it very quickly, jumped out of his seat on the in the box with with the elbow towards the player to stop him. Like it was it was funny because I could see Stephen O'Donnell was kind of looking the other way at the time. Yeah. And he I turned around. Say, I did say early in the, I think I did say on our chat about 15, 20 minutes in, I did say this game either needs a goal or a fight. And you know, Podge obviously, you know, got the memo and you know the start of <laughs> it, it. It was very flat first half. But I think overall, I think I, I, I maybe look. Maybe I'm wrong, but I I'm, I'm happy overall with it. You know, I mean, yes, we haven't scored, but it could have been a lot worse. I mean, Waterford were, you know, they were a very good team going forward, but we just didn't let them play tonight. I don't think. I think it was look. I think we'd be happy enough overall. Yeah, I, th I think when you look at the overall game, like I say, it was probably you know uh, it lacked something it, kind of killer instinct in the in the first half, and it kind of just kind of rolled on, and the fans were very loud and, and passionate at the start and then the longer it went on it kind of they kind of dipped slightly as as the entertainment dipped i felt on the pitch and yeah. um, for it it um in the second half i think we probably saw our, our bench had, had more of an impact yeah you know as i said cami we'll, we'll we'll talk about him later on but you know he, he he definitely had a big big difference and we've said it before and it's obviously just a fitness thing but when when man comes on there's something about him yeah it's, you know, he wants to hug the touch touch line. He he wants to you know be involved in everything, and um, I I think down that side with with Archie Davis, they they have a better connection together. Yeah, and for it, like I think there's something raw with with McGuckin as well. I, I I just think he's he's a little chaotic at times. He you know which can be good in some in some games. He, he, you need that bit of chaos, and it's it, it's it's welcome. And um, at other times, you um. You just need someone like Man who who knows how to play that position, and I think McGuckin's probably we probably want him more central than than he is out and um, yeah. out that side. And I think when you know we brought on Ryan O'Kane and uh, Man went on the other side, then it it kind of balanced us out a lot more. Interesting in in the post match interviews, and um, Stephen said that they have a number of games planned over over the international break. Because yeah. he feels that there's a lot more players need minutes in them, and you're probably thinking, you're probably thinking, you know, man is is one of those players that we we could definitely um could definitely do it, and if we get him up to match fitness, because he was knocking around in preseason, then all of a sudden he he was out, and you'd say, uh, Brink is probably another player just needs minutes, um, right now, and if if we had these back, I did see. Um, Paul Doyle was doing a bit of a session then later on um, with John Mountney and stuff like that. So you think when you think of the players like Yarmis and you, 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 your players there could make an impact if they were fully fit. And, um, yeah, and, that, and that's it. And like it's you know even even just take John Mountney there. Like I mean I know people you know John suffered with his injuries, but when he when he's on it, I mean 
you know, what a player to have. To, you know, he, he might not be starting every week, but what a player to have coming off the bench. But Robbie, yeah, Robbie Mahan, like you say, I must, I, I can, you can only assume it's a fitness thing for him not starting games. And, Look, maybe Stevie fancies him as a you know come on and run you know run a tired fullback maybe what McGuckin is supposed to do in the first kind of yeah. 60, 70 minutes run him tired and then he gets on but very light like Darren says very lively like lively's putting up lively I think it's f- some of his touch so it was first touch him and Scott Hay could be excellent out there I actually thought mm. Scott Hay didn't find him once or twice a little bit too late he got, he got the pass often but I think them two if you see that that kind of triangle in from the right you've got Davis. Scott Hay running up and you know box to box and then Mahan out right could be really really something to watch during the season. Um, I actually thought Bradshaw played. I wouldn't be a, you know I kind of didn't slay him, but I think he's the jury's out whether he's a ball playing centre half or he's a CDM. I actually thought he's done really well tonight. You know again. Yeah, I think it was one of his stronger games there yeah, tonight. Yeah, probably, probably his best since probably the Rovers match. And I know he's got mm. he got a bit hard headed in the Rovers match, but I think you know like the, the big thing is I seen somebody mention the defence as well. It's that that kind of thing, you know, getting get the centre back partnership right. I know you have Andy Boyle would obviously be your starting one. Or, you know, we have we've had my O over the last couple of weeks, but them boys done themselves no harm tonight whatsoever. Um, you know, even once or twice, Zach John lost the ball, not lost the ball. The ball probably went past it, but pace wise, absolutely, it honestly pulls off an unbelievable tackle. Yeah, just, it was perfectly six, timed. Sixty five minutes into the game. Just in the second half, absolutely incredible. Like he's in on goal, and he, you know, when Rose obviously stopped too early on, but you know, I don't think he, I don't think they're going to miss a toad, and it's a fantastic tackle. Um, but yeah, look, yeah. really strong. I, I, I was worried. Co- that Colin Mullen, just agreeing with you there. You know, just, just saying, oh, Anthony was outstanding tonight. His best game by far for us. Never oh, put a foot wrong. And captain tonight as well. Yeah, uh, yeah we'll, we'll, it was we'll, a few. So, he won't every header, last ditch tackles, and look very assured. Him and Johnson were rock solid. It's just funny, just, just to go through, and, and you know, we will get to it later on. But obviously, we will have our usual man of the match competition. So keep your man of the match suggestions come in um, with us, and we will pick a winner based on ours later on. But I'm. I'm going to say this is going a bit of a landslide in one way because if if we go back up to uh, Darren's post, you know, Dave Johnson's man of the match again, you know, another one there for for Zach Johnson. Um, Johnson very impressive man of the match again. You know, I think it's it's going to it's going to show us uh, tonight where you know Monroe and Johnson very good again. Uh, Frank in there Johnson man of the match again you know so it, it looks it looks tonight and you know we, we questioned during the Pats match you know can we can we get a balance right there what we you know who are we going to play on the left you know it's Muller again but he kind of seemed a lot more assured again um, even though it's not his natural position, but that's, you know, I, I think maybe the system, the pitch and everything else, it's maybe we're better off playing him there that he knows and understands how to how to play on it. Yeah. But, um, and, I, we, and like we had, look, um, you know, we've had a few ca- comments about Muller and, you know, but again, he's come in, he's, he's, he could be, he's possibly quite, maybe quite rightly or definitely in Stevie's way, maybe, you know, uh, Jamie's not going off to the greatest start. She could be holding down a left back position now, but I, again, it could be maybe a change of partnership at centre back. Louis in there with him and it's not Andy. I don't know, but yeah, look, look comfortable again. We never really looked like, I mean, for all the ball Waterford had, you know, they, we never looked too shaky at the back. I mean, I, I, I probably, yeah, I didn't even mention, oh, Frank's mentioned, somebody else mentioned there, like uh, Archie Davis. Yeah. I didn't even mention him yet. It, yeah, he just said he was immense tonight. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Like, and I, I, his run, his run, he, he, he picked it up from inside his own half in the second half, in right. the second half of the game. And then suddenly he ended up in the opposition box and he was like, oh my God, what, what am I going to do now? Yeah. And, he, and even someone like, to have the option of Durant starting as well and coming on, I'll, I'll be taken off, but nearly got himself booked on the sideline when that penalty wasn't a penalty. But, um, you know, again, coming in, cutting in off the side, taking chances, taking shots. Hayden Muller's actually had a shot from, from coming in the, the same kind of route. And I'd say... If, the, if it doesn't hit the defender on the head, it probably definitely goes towards the goal. Maybe get make it a corner, maybe hits the post. But you know, I think yeah. it's it's definitely a positive game. It's it's albeit look, we we'll go back to the little, little but you know, I, I I could we have played better? Absolutely. Are we missing something up front? One hundred percent. There's just yeah, something we, 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 something we're gonna have to have a chat about later on. Um, just more coming in here on 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 Zach Johnson. Um, so Emma doing in there as well. You know. Zach Johnson and Ansley were excellent. Scott High and Archie Davis also getting a mention there. Uh, good point there as well from uh, Mark Harlan. Just, you know, 
Louis Anzi, he was very vocal tonight. And I, I noticed it soon as um, a couple of the subs had come in um, at that stage. And I think he was looking for them to kind of hit that level a little bit higher on the pitch. And he was just barking orders. Yeah. Obviously, you know, he, he he gets what it means to be, to be captain of the club as well. But you could see him. He just did not want that tempo to drop. He did not want that level of commitment um, to drop either. Actually, I think it was Ryan O'Kane had just come on, he'd run over to the far side, uh, the ball dropped in front of him, and it kind of was about two yards away, and uh, Louis Anthony gave out to him for not running, for that commitment, for that two yards. To just It just gave that player an extra bit of time to, to get on the ball, and Louis Anthony was not happy at all. But, yeah. you know, that's and that's what you want to hear from. Yeah, and like you said, that, that the captain's armband, that will add to that. That gives him that little bit of more... You know, maybe he, maybe he's not as vocal. I I, I definitely noticed the vocality. He ha, he had been vocal before, but the fact that maybe got Boyle beside him, or it's maybe Benson ahead of him midfield. You know, them kind of you know probably more experienced players at the club. But I definitely think the armband we kind of raised a few eyebrows at it, but you know, it, it definitely suited him. Um, mm. you know, like I think he's one hundred percent. Even his heading of a ball, like, yeah. You know, watching the the flight of a ball, the bounce of a ball, which he missed early on in his when he started on dog, he was missing all that type of stuff and. Yeah, I just thought, like, I know we're talking about Zach John, but I think Louis played outstanding tonight. Yeah, and I know there's a lot Jane, of for, for Jane just saying now, yeah, yeah, Ansley, Ansley man of the match. Um, Darren Mean just, just wondering, you know, could you could you accommodate Davis higher up the pitch to bring him in? Yeah, well, I think he, I think, if you haven't got Robbie Mann, that might be. <laughs> that's it. Like, I think he's, he's, he's an, an, an option there, absolutely. I mean, his, 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 like, he's a perfect fullback. I mean, yeah. going forward, you, 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 that's the way fullbacks are, you've got to be strong, but. Yeah, absolutely. Going forward, tempo, pace of the game. I like. There's probably not a quick up player on the pitch. He's probably quicker than Durant. You know, when we put them up the pace, he, he's as quick as anybody going. And I think he's like I like like I said at the start of the season, uh, first podcast. I'm surprised we kept him. I'm really, mm. like, that was like the brand new signing having him. You know, I know we had him, but I'm surprised nobody came in to buy him or to take him on. But yeah, a quality player, absolutely. Like he's he's eight, nine out of ten every game. Yeah. Um. So speaking of Im- impactful substitutes. <laughs> we, we we have won here tonight due to a, a seriously dodgy laptop from uh, Stephen McEvitt. Uh, welcome to the field. Don't talk Democrats, Niall Newbury. Niall, how are you, pal? How you doing, Chris? Back by on on top of the man. Not a bit. <laughs> not a bit, pal. Podcast. But Paddy Power's a whole thing now about the super sub pal. So you're you're stepping into the to the breaches on this. Uh, Niall, your thoughts on the game tonight? You know we've mentioned uh, the frustration of not being able to take the three points tonight. But we're I don't know if you can see from from comments coming in, but you know the partnership um, tonight in, in defence, in particular the two central defenders. That's it's getting a lot of praise for tonight. You know Zach Johnson for, for a 19 year old, he was super tonight. And Louis Ansley taking the captain's armband. We're just saying he was very, very vocal tonight. Probably won every single heading heading duel that he had tonight. And so that that's that's a big plus for and, and something to take forward at least. Yeah, I think the, the 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 big plus probably was the defensive pairing. I mean, I spoke to Zach Johnson and um Louis Ansley just a short while ago, actually. I got both of them tonight. So I mean it was probably I mean Louis Ansley, captain. I know. I don't think he's ever captained the dock before. Don't, um, yeah. Zach Johnson. We haven't seen him yet. You know. We. I think he was our final um, signing of the eleven, but we haven't actually seen him in action yet, even off the bench. So <laughs> you're not really sure what to expect um, when you see the the team sheet just um, this, uh, this evening. But I mean, I thought Young Johnson done really well. Um, Ansley, as you said there, Chris. You know, was winning duels. He's winning headers. You know, defensively we were a lot more sound, even full back wise. You know, Archie Davies. Um, you know, Hayden Muller done the simple mm. things correctly. Davis was very good again tonight, I thought. I mean, we've we done the simple things right at the back, which hasn't been obviously the norm, to, to put it mildly, <laughs> um, yeah. in, in, in recent weeks. But, I mean, that was the one the one good thing, I suppose, from tonight was the clean sheet, the first clean sheet of the season. The only, side, the only problem with that is, you know, effectively you've still drawn the match and um, you know, you're, you're still bottom of the league with two points and you know, one goal and none from open play, nine conceded. So it's still pretty grim reading, um, mm-hmm. despite the points and slightly improved showing. Yeah, look, Gally, we 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 said we'll get back and we'll have a chat about it now. But obviously, 
you know, the lack of goals is 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 a real concern for us. We, we talk about big chances for Sam Durant tonight. He he the one that curled wide in the first half, and the other one he, he hit straight at the keeper. He looked lively and stuff when he came on, but just we're not taking those chances. And Gullen then goes down in, in post match. Niall, you probably said the same to yourselves, but you know Stephen O'Donnell said there was a twisted ankle. Uh, possibly when he when he fell over and that's that's why they 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 had to take him off that leaves us with a, a possible conundrum maybe the break is just at the right time gary but we you know we we have to find a way to score some goals haven't we yeah I, and we like I, I i there's just something seems to be like i, I take for instance, we go back to the tally game i thought gullen was outstanding i, I like you know, boys talk. You'd see people online. You know, a back and forth. You know, top goal scorer of the season, and he look. He looks like an absolute player. There just seems to be just something a little bit, and maybe it's just the luck we're having. Yeah, mm. he, he has everything. I just, I just think for running in behind defenders, I don't think that's the way to play across into the box. Poacher in the box. That's what he looks like to me. He definitely has the pace. Definitely has the the ability to kind of track back like a Pat Huben. But yeah, you're just missing that killer instinct. I think. Like you said earlier, Chris McGuckin could be an option. Um, I actually think Robbie Mahan could be an option as well. If we're not going to get him, maybe you know, out, out in the wing all the time, somebody to kind of run a centre half ragged. But I just hope it doesn't become a thing, you know, well, we're still we're sitting here in maybe May and we're struggling for goals. It's not so much struggling for goals, it nobody's scoring. So Dundalk have been well versed in scoring goals from midfield, centre backs up for headers. Like how many goals Andy Boyle, Brian Garton, I know we'll come back, but how many goals have they scored over over the years? Yeah. You know, and that's that's something that's not happening. So it's not even the strikers now, it's, it's as the team are just not scoring. Durant has a chances tonight. Um we have a Cammy's chance that just seemed to go in slow motion. You know, I don't know what. And then he's hit it right at him. It's a perfect height for goal. It was a great save all the same, but yeah, it's it's a worrying as a as a group. It's not so much the strikers. It's as a group we're just not hitting the back of the net. But it's like anything else. I think Stephen Stephen uh, Kenny's team the second season might have been through a spell like this, and then I think we battled Sligo four or five nil at Oriel Park one night. So we, I think when we do hit it right, we will give someone a, a bit of a pace and hopefully. But uh, yeah, it's worrying as a group. It's not so much the strikers because you know I think there's enough in there to get in and around the strike and help out scoring why Scott High could be a player that can play a little bit higher up the top Benson as well but yeah as a group I think we have to start you know like even I'm probably going on a little bit just in further into the game but even if you take the last injury time five minutes whatever it was four minutes we had two free kicks into the box nothing came at him like you could you could tell what was going to happen on the second one it was the same free kicks as the first one and that's a, that's mm. where you kind of have to take those chances like up from the back get the headers on but you know, it's worrying as a group that we're not scoring. I wouldn't mind. I don't mind. We don't mind who scores, but yeah, as as a whole, it's something that we don't want it to affect as we go on. Now, the good thing is we haven't conceded either, like Neil says. But um, yeah, it's it's not it's not great. It's not you don't mm. want you want to be especially going into the games we've got coming up. Now, look, we might fix that against the Marcus next week, but like I fancy a goal against them myself. <laughs> um... <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> I'd fucking seen you play that. I hope <laughs> way above my pay grade. <laughs> uh, Niall, like you're, you're really looking for someone to just stick their hands up, and I think you know it, it's something that Stephen was saying tonight. Is he's really looking for players to say, "I, I want that jersey, and I'm going to hold on to it." Like Camielli has those big that big chance tonight. And and that would have been a, a for a good shot for him then to you know stake claim to the to the starting striker's jersey. But you know it, it, we just don't have someone who has that killer instinct at the moment. Yeah, I mean, like Jamie Gullen obviously with the exception of getting that free kick, that brilliant free kick in the first night of the season against um, against Shamrock Rovers and Tala. I mean, we were all kind of like I was very impressed with Jamie Gullen that night personally from every aspect of his play, not just the, yep. not just the goal scoring side of it. Mm-hmm. Um, Cameron Elliott, you know, obviously as you mentioned, had a had a chance tonight. I mean, you, you don't want to pick on players, but like a return of one goal in in in, a, in an entire season, and you know, coming into what well, five games into this one, it, it's not good reading. I know I appreciate he's come off the bench in a lot of those matches, but like, yeah. you know, Kieran McGuckin was playing out wide the last couple of games. I mean, I'd like to see. I know he's an orthodox centre forward. I'd like to see him maybe, obviously, especially with Golden, you know, now seemingly injured after rolling his ankle. Um, you would like to see maybe McGuckin get a chance. I mean, I just saw in one of the comments there. I think Owen Kenny was yeah. Um, was Frank superb. just had it in, yeah, yeah, it was uh, superb in preseason. I mean, mm-hmm. he got a goal against 
Drogheda in the um, Leinster Senior Cup slash Malone Cup. I mean... Um, sponsored by the Town End Podcast? Sponsored by the Town End <laughs> Podcast. That's the problem. <laughs> shameless shameless self-promotion here. But um, I think... Uh, <laughs> but I think, I think um, you know, I, um, Owen Kenny, I mean, 18 years of age, raw talent, still has a lot to learn. But I mean, um, I think... I think he's a player who you'd like to see maybe a bit more of. I'm, 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 so, I'm sort of surprised that he hasn't been in more matchday squads, I suppose, mm. at least, at the very least, um, yeah. as an option. Maybe in a game like tonight, where you could maybe throw him on for the last five and see what happens. But because he, you know, he, he has that raw sort of that, 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 that impet- impetuosity, I suppose, of not having that fear and young players tend to bring. Um, you'd like to see a bit more of him. But I don't know. I mean, I'm sure Stephen has his reasons. He has his own team. He wants, wants to pick his own players. Um, but I just think goals were struggling. Like it's it's probably the, at the risk of most obvious comment of the year, but we're struggling for goals, and it's kind of hard to see at the moment where they're coming from. Although I thought Sam Durant offered a real creative outlet for us tonight. Um, mm. I know I think Dan Pope was on last week, and he was talking, you know, about maybe he's a player should be starting. I think I would concur with that. I've been saying that to a lot of people in recent weeks. And um, he got yeah. the nod tonight. I didn't. I think he done quite well. You know, still maybe taking maybe one too many touches at times. But, you know, cutting inside, you know, he, he was certainly our most creative outlet, I think, mm. going forward tonight. And a player who can certainly, you know, you feel he can make things happen when he gets the ball mm-hmm. to his feet. So those are probably some of the positives you're looking at tonight. But goals, we need a goal. And I think um, that's just, you know, points is one thing, but give us a goal. <laughs> and you could see as, as the game start, went on, you know? yeah, as the game yeah. went on, Lyle, you could see... You know, like the crowd were getting behind them, but it was almost like the crowd know what's going on. You know, they know there's just something not 100%, but they were urging them on. It was a different type of kind of Oriel roar tonight. You know, mm. the last kind of probably 20 minutes maybe, but they knew that they were struggling and they're struggling for maybe a bit of confidence, a bit of motivation. But again, you know, we're coming off a game, you know, with all that confidence, you know, like something, it's got to pay off at some stage, but unfortunately we're just not... It just doesn't seem to be clicking out. Like, we don't know what's happened to Gollum with his ankle, but I, th- I think we have the potential to score a lot of goals. It's just, like you say, Sam Durant there tonight, probably on another day he scores twice. You know, mm. like he, he's yeah. keeping Ryan O'Kane quiet on the bench. Yeah. O'Kane comes on. You know, you've also got the fullbacks getting forward as well. So I do think there's potential there. It's just it's just not, there's just something just missing there. And I'm, I'm just hoping it's a bit of confidence. That's all I'm just, you know, it's, 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 weighing, on them, it's weighing them down now after a couple of weeks. You've only scored once. I you mean, know, it's it's like it it's got to be tough. Yeah, like it, it probably is a like confidence is a big part of it, Andrew. I mean, like it, I, I think if you look at some of the if you look at some of the recent performances, I mean, like the standalone games, like the standalone result tonight is not a disastrous result for argument's mm-hmm. sake. Losing one 0 the Minchia core against St. Pat's, who finished you know top three last season, is not a disastrous result. It's when you're marrying that with the with, with the Sligo performance, and you're marrying that with the maybe the Galway. I suppose, I suppose in some respects, even the Galway game, you can sort of tactically see how you could lose that game, in mm-hmm. one respect. But it's just when you're marrying that with that Sligo performance, I think that's what's really got us into a bit of a sticky patch here. And confidence-wise, you know, that's going to knock any team for six. And he's made changes. I mean, um, he's made quite quite a few changes in recent weeks to his team. He hasn't had a settled team. But um, he probably is that part of the issue, though, Niall, that he's he's still uncertain. Where what five five games in or whatever we are now, yeah. and he's, he's still well, unsure of what. I know we mentioned it a few times on, on the podcast last season. I mean, like this is Stephen's third season in charge, and I mean, I appreciate there's been lots of ins and outs mm. for you know a myriad of diff- different reasons with different ind- individual players. But ultimately, you're into your second or so your third season now, and and you you have no clue really who your best 11 are so i mean and i said this on like a broken record at this point you know it starts with your back line your goalkeeper your back four that's where any yeah. successful team that continuity is any good successful team's built on that continuity at the back you know again we've got another back four tonight tonight it worked yeah you hopefully maybe go with the same back four against shells in a fortnight and um, you probably should based on tonight i mean i thought that was the one thing we actually look a lot more you know, sound in that department than we have, you know, like it's been quite comical actually. Like the Sligo game was comical. I mean, like some of the goals we give away in that were, were, were you know, it, it, was quite, it was quite bizarre. I think the third one in particular where everyone just kind of stops. Andy Boyle makes a good tackle, a reasonably good tackle and then everybody, is, including Boyle, just kind of stops and 
it's just rolled into the net, really. I mean, it, yeah. those and like O'Donnell said this last week um, in Intercore to the media. I mean, it was like I think the phrase he used was just rubbish goals. We're giving away rubbish. That's right. Really, at least at least we've actually nullified that tonight. Waterford, in fairness, had a couple of chances. I think Ross Munro, to his credit, you know, a bit of a patchy pre preseason. Pre um, Shelby got the nod um, for the league opener against um, Shamrock Rovers. But I think, in fairness to Ross Munro, since he's come back, I mean, he made like, the goal last week in Intercore. He actually makes a good save. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, the rebound from Calvin, and there's not much he can do about that. No. Tonight, he's made two or three very decent saves that have kept the game scoreless. So, no. if only for that, we, we could be sitting here talking about another defeat. You know what I mean? But it's at the other end where we need to show like we've shored it up tonight at the back and then the goalkeeping department it's the other end now where we need to start seeing a bit more you know i just i just don't know you've only got what you have in terms of playing per personnel but i mean I, I i'm no football manager to put it mildly but i mean there's surely there's, 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 there's different things we can try robbie Mann is a player i think we need to see i haven't seen yeah. him start a game yet he looks bright he, he last week in inchicore when durant and Mann came on the two boys linked up very well they're two creative players You'd like to see Robbie Matten get a bit more game time now. Um, Sam Durant obviously has done himself no harm in terms of keeping his place in the team. And I'd like to see maybe Owen Kenny, maybe Kieran McGuckin get a nod up front um, going forward. So we need to be a bit more sort of... I know I'm probably critical, I'm probably hip, I'm probably contradicting myself here in one sense, saying that we haven't got a settled team and then telling them to make a scatter of changes. <laughs> <But, laughs> God, you said it because I was going to... I know, yeah. Many things. Like, Owen Kenny would have that... <laughs> You know, that Ryan O'Kane impact that nobody knew what to expect. Ryan O'Kane had that impact a couple of seasons ago as well. And that's yeah. what you're thinking. I know Owen's gone down to Wexford and done well in there, but people still wouldn't know what to deal with. They, don't, they still don't know what a kind of player he's like. So, mm. you know, you would have that kind of, you know, young gun, I suppose. That's the best way to put it. The unknown. Yeah. And that's what Ryan O'Kane brought. And, you know, I think in, in certain times... I think you know. I think it's right to kind of get him in. You know, I think I, I, mm. like consider, and it's not just because we're lacking goals. I think to have that unknown option, and McGuckin, I get, I, I suppose, is, is one of those as well. But yeah, I think you know we're obviously we're biased because he's Prince Kenny, and that he's he's the son of the of, of the famous king. But I do think there's something of an unknown element there that could yeah. just get the fans back, like like Ryan O'Kane, like Tiernan Mulvena. You know, these players that came down mm. the lane, you know, from Dundalk, that kind of. You know, I think just. Yeah, I think you might need something like that if, and it's, you know, we're hoping not a big if, that, that it doesn't just, happen after the next game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think what he could also add, Andrew, is just that sort of uh, uh, fearlessness. I mean, mm. like, it's it's obviously, like you mentioned, confidence there. I mean, like, a player that age, I mean, you saw him in preseason yourself. You know, he had the number nine shirt there against Drogheda in the, you know, in the Town End Cup um, <laughs> against Drogheda. But um, I think he he... he I mean, he just has that sort of, you know, a player of that age is going to have that sort of that, that fearlessness. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's something that we're kind of lacking. We just need to take that, we need to take risks in, in the opposing team's half. We need to be a bit more sort of in your face. And I think someone, a young lad like that might, might, might be the answer. Like, he might not be either. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. I mean, Kieran McGuckin, obviously, playing out in the wide. He's, um, by trade, a centre forward. He's come from the championship in England. He's obviously played at a good level. He's off at the Northern Ireland on the 21s now next week. Mm -hmm. You, you're probably suspecting that he'll get the nod against Shelburne, you would think, um, as a centre forward, assuming Jamie Gullen will still be out. Yeah. And uh, we don't know yeah. how serious that injury is. We probably won't know until the next 48 hours or so how you know serious that injury actually is to Jamie Gullen. But I mean, like, I, I just don't know. I think, just going back to what you were saying there a while ago, I just think having a settled, you know, we just don't really know. We don't even know our best formation, do you know what I mean? Let alone, let alone um, our best 11. And I think that's, as Chris just said there, I mean, like, that's probably a huge part of the problem and that's you know we, we probably shouldn't be here you know two point two point something years into the season of the rain you know yeah <clears throat> well look Gally I suppose if if there's any good coming out of um starting the podcast this late is we seem to be tapping into the Chinese market who, who would have known Swift so Chinese listeners um tonight um on on YouTube so uh ni hao to to everyone in in China Gally probably Big moments in that match swung on penalty appeals on for both teams. How did you see the both of those chances? Oh, I don't even care about Waterford. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, like, I, I tell you, I, the Waterford one, I thought it was a penalty, uh, and, I, and I was like, I did. Mm. I haven't seen. I haven't seen the replay of either one. I did actually think that Dave Mackey was sitting in front of me, and he he looked like he didn't see, think it was a penalty. 
I thought it was. I was like delighted that we didn't get it. No, R1. I've seen it once. I haven't seen the replay. I haven't seen an F80. But I was I was nearly three rows down. I jumped that high off my chair. Like the crowd went absolutely mental. Like it looked like an absolute stone wall penalty. I don't know what else he would have seen. I'm surprised the whole bench weren't booked and sent off because Podge got sent. I was surprised. Like that's what I was saying about the rant. The rant was right up at this fourth official's face. Like I, I'd have to see it again. I don't know, but to me, it, on the day, Darren, it looked like an absolute stone wall penalty. As as like. I just couldn't believe he didn't give it. I couldn't believe it. He nearly claimed him. I just couldn't go. I couldn't understand it. Um, <laughs> now look, maybe, maybe, I, maybe I need to see it again. Might Niall might have a different, but I, I can't believe, I can't believe he didn't get. It. I thought the ref. I actually thought the the ref wasn't great. The fourth official was shocking. If anybody you should get a camera on the fourth official tonight, he was he was like going off at nothing, like absolute hmm. crazy stuff, like. I don't know. Look, I wouldn't do their job. I appreciate. Look at graphs are great. You know, the, Padge the, probably the, got him set off, right? Like, yeah, you know, no, probably yeah, just kind yeah, of went. I need to be on. on, on. Yeah. No, I just thought there was some kind of no. For me, it's a stone wall. I actually thought theirs was a penalty. I like that. There's, it looked like a dive. I could see why he didn't give it. Mm. But if the dive, you book him. Do you know what I mean? So you, you can't have it both ways. But to me, it looked. It looked actually looked like two penalties. But our one hundred percent. I'd have to see it again. But I'm. I'm going. What I saw looked like stone wall. Niall's probably going to say no, he dived, but I, I, I haven't seen it again. But at the time, I couldn't believe it. I actually, the crowd, I never heard the crowd in Norway Park. I haven't heard them like that in a long, long time. They were absolutely mm. livid. Niall, what do you think? Look, you know, when I, I, I was up in the stand and when 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 the incident happened, you know, you aren't really supposed to show your colours in the stand. Like, and I actually did, I actually did sort of, or sorry, in the press area, I should say, and I did sort of, you know, wave my arms a wee bit as if to say, like, how is this not a penalty? So I thought I, I, I'm mean, again, I did think it was a stonewall penalty when I on first viewing. Um, I had the benefit of you know, Gavin McLaughlin and um, showed myself and the waiting media a, 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 a video of a different angle and um, from sort of like the, the touchline. And um, it does look like the referee might have made the right call on this one from that angle, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to say, but I oh, don't say that, Neil. But, <laughs> but Davey Max said no uh, on comms. But what I will say is, um, one way or the other, I'm not really sure how the referee's coming to the conclusion of booking Cameron Ellis. Mm, I, don't think, I don't think it's a dive either way. I mean, if whether it's a penalty or not is, you know, probably at this point uh, subjective at this stage. But, I mean, I don't think it's a booking. Now, I'm, I've seen two different angles of it. Obviously, the angle from the stand, the LOI TV angle, and um, the angle that Gavin McLaughlin showed us. But, I mean... You could work for VAR. I couldn't work with VAR personally. I probably should have been tonight. Look at with, with, with that amount of. Um, yeah. but, I mean, I still can't really come to a conclusion because it does look like a penalty on the other angle. You know that kind of way. So, I mean, but one mm-hmm. way or the other, I, 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 from all three angles, I don't know how he's come to the conclusion that he's built Cameron Elliott. I mean, I'm not really sure. Yeah. I think, I think the, I think the referee, in fairness, and as you mentioned, the fourth official, they were very sort of trigger happy tonight, and I think it was kind of, you know, the, there was a lot of needless kind of messing in the game, and which probably didn't need it. But I mean, for me, it's. I'm going to veer on the side of no penalty um, on this one, on the town end VAR system, but I think, um, but also not a booking for Cammy Elliott either. Definitely not, yeah. Absurd, yeah. I think absurd. maybe pro- possibly the, the, the Waterford penalty may have resulted in the booking, because he probably should have booked the Waterford as well, if, he, if he's going to be at that yeah, crack, you know, yeah. maybe that well, might have resulted in yeah. Cammy Elliott. Yeah. Yeah, I, think, I think the Waterford one just seemed to be, you know, the defender just got in the way of the mm. player as as the ball came in and then he, he hit the back of the defender and hit the ground with his arms on the air looking for it. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought if if either of them could have been a penalty, I think ours was a, far more a penalty. Uh, if you're going to give one, that's the one you're given. But um, from, from where we were in the gantry, it's 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 hard to see. You know, I, I did hear, you know, Cammy was talking to Brian Gartland uh, when we were doing the, um, the interviews at the end and he was actually asking, was it a penalty, lads? Because he said he he felt the player come in on him yeah. on his side, but he tried to stand up at that. And then then he felt his feet and he went over. So he, he said, What what was it that got me? Well, like he, well, Chris, even if you do go down, and like it's it's part of the game nowadays. Like, I mean, if, if players are told to go down when they feel a yeah. touch, I mean, like if you're given a booking for that, I mean every single player. In the Premier League exactly. in England, in the German well, League, like, the fact that there was contact every week. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the fact that Cammy said there was contact, 
Yeah, yeah and in fairness to the full back, it does. It just, I've seen the replay there. I've had it up. I have a double screen here, lads. It's really fancy. Tiny Mac. You're in Park. Park. He hasn't seen Cami coming in behind him. Mm. But I mean, still, I agree. Like, you know, there is contact there. Look, it's probably not a stone wall. If we could just rewind and edit that, it's probably not a stone wall as a call, <laughs> but I definitely think, think it's a penalty. <laughs> There's a few edits in the light show, I can tell you, Gally, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen them given, as I say. You've seen them given. You've seen them well, given. That's always yeah. the, the, the yeah. defense way of putting it, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, and, I think, and I think that's it. And look, Niall, this can also be one of those things of, you know, if, if it's not for bad luck, you'd have no luck sometimes. But it's it, it it's a bit tough that we you know we badly need a goal and we don't get a decision like that again and you know we've seen us you know give away silly things previously to this and you like to think that these all even out by the end of the season but we we could have done with that penalty tonight and the oh, chance yeah. to take all three points you see that's that's probably the real killing part tonight yeah i don't think anyone's complaining like whether it's a penalty or not i don't think any of us are complaining if it's given like i mean i mm. actually at the time, in, in, in live play, I fully expected the, the referee, Kevin O'Sullivan, to point to the spot. I was absolutely thunderstruck when he pointed the other way and, and booked Cameron Elliott, as was yeah. pretty much everybody else in the main stand. Yeah, and so, I, think, uh, I think actually a lot of people even missed the booking because they were that, they were that sense, irate. Yeah. They yeah. Actually, mm. I think most people actually didn't even realise he was booked. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, it's... Look, look it's, some of them, some of these... Yeah, so as Chris said, some of these will go for you, some of them won't. Yeah, You'd like to think it'll even itself out. I mean, yeah. look, as you can say, Warford could argue they might have had one as well at the other end earlier mm. in the game. I mean, mm. it's just like a draw. A draw is probably a fair result in the end in one respect. I think we, we shaded it on chances, of course, but I mean, did we do enough attacking-wise to actually, like how many good, good chances did we create tonight? Do you know what I mean? Um, mm. Would be the real question and probably not too many, you know? Um, I think a draw is probably a fair, a fair enough result. I think we did shade it. You know, a one nil, two one would have been maybe okay. But I mean, it's just you're just looking at it now. I mean, it, it, it's kind of like the, the, the real thing for them, Doc. Now is is is, is what is where do we obviously we've got the benefit of international break now. I know we got to mock this in the Leinster Senior Cup, but realistically, our next proper game is against you know Shelburne in two weeks' time, who, who are flying at the minute. You know, they won again tonight in in Chicago, two one. They're sixteen points. You know, they're pulling away at the top at the moment, and Damien Duff hasn't been very... They're just giants, Gally. They're just giants. Yeah. You know, and... But... Uh, <laughs> but Poor um, Johnny. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I mean, like, they, they, they're flying at the moment, and I mean, yeah. they went, I said it a few weeks ago, I mean, they wouldn't be a bad show to, to actually win the league this season, just the way they set up. They're not a pretty <laughs> team to watch. No, but, but like the reality is, our next three fixtures, I believe. Now I'm open to correction on this because I haven't actually double checked it. But I think it's next league fixtures: are Shelburne away, Shells. yeah, Drogheda in the Loud Derby. I think is it in yeah, Oriel yeah. on, on the bank holiday, and then Derry City away. Like that's correct. Three that's seriously correct, tough yeah. games. Yeah, three seriously tough games. And that we were we were saying this a couple of weeks. We were saying this maybe two, was it the Galway game, Chris? Or was it no? It wasn't that was the day in Massey? Was it whatever? What did we play after Galway? Sligo. I go, or was it? Yeah, that that cracker and that cracker of a game. And we were saying, like, you know, the first of April could be a real that kind of window of games <clears> could be a real, <throat> you know, it could be looking back at this and saying, like, I don't think we'll be looking back at the night's result in six months and oh, do you remember this game? It wasn't those type, but I think over the next few weeks, this could be a real challenge and kind of, yeah, time for everybody. And, it's you like, know. yeah, absolutely, Andrew. I mean, like, if and if draw had a win. You know, touch wood, they don't. But if trying to win against Sligo tomorrow, um, you know, we're sort of rooted a wee bit. I know it's very early days, and it's probably not the time to majorly panic at this point mm. after five, six matches. But I mean, you could be rooted to the bottom, and you've got three seriously tough fixtures. I mean, the, the loud derby could take on a whole new meaning this season if Drogheda were to lose tomorrow as well. You know, that kind of way. So it could be, it could be a, it could be a six point or loud derbies this season if if we're not careful. And I mean. It's just we just need that win. I don't know where it's going to come from. It could come from the most unlikely of sources. We could go to Talca Park and win three 0 for all I know. But I'm just saying we need to get points on the board, and that's ultimately what's going to make or break your season. You know, we probably if we're sitting here tonight and we're celebrating with the greatest respect to Waterford, you know they're newly promoted, and if we're celebrating like a nil nil draw at home to Waterford, if we're celebrating a, a, a one nil defeat to St Pat's last week. Mm-hmm. It, it probably is more of a concern, more of a cause of greater concern because that maybe tells us where we are. Then you know what I mean. If we're actually taking those those moral victories against 
teams we probably should be beating on paper mm. um, in, in the case of Waterford tonight. So, I mean, that's what, I mean, we, we just need to get the confidence back. We need to, At the back, we showed it up tonight. That was one thing we got right. But yeah. We need to get it right at the other end now. We need to start scoring goals. And, I, and my concern is I don't really see where they're coming from at the minute. Um, so, let's see what happens. I mean, it's, 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 yeah. it's it, could be, it could be strap yourself in this season. I don't see us getting relegated personally. Um, I think we will have enough to, to stay in the division. But I don't see us at this moment in time, at least, I don't see us pushing for top three either. So, I mean... Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's where do you go, you know? Gally, like if if we have a, a quick look at the table, hopefully it'll kick in. There we go. Look at that. I'm back, baby. Um, <laughs> the two points after five games, um, it's it's tough because you're looking that everyone else has, has had that win. Everyone else is at least scoring goals. We're, we're not doing that. You know, we've a bad hit there, a minus eight on, on the goal difference too. <sighs> When you're looking down, you're seeing Pat's Drahada right above us. And, you know, Drahada we have coming up. I know, I understand that. But Pat's we've just lost to Shamrock Rovers, picked up their first win tonight. And, you know, they could easily, with players coming back, kick on. And then Sligo, you know, is four points ahead of that then again. It, like, you're, you're, I suppose Niall just mentioned it, you're, you're looking at that Sligo uh, Rovers Drahada game now tomorrow. And, you know, you're you're now kind of thinking you don't want anyone to pull away from you. You don't yeah. want Drada to win because you know then you're well cut adrift. Your your four points cut adrift. You don't want you want Sligo to win, but then that closes a gap to the teams above you. Should you ever pick up your 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 win, you know? So it's a damn you do and damn do you don't moment, isn't it? Yeah, and, and like John Flanagan, like Flanagan's coming to Flano is the voice of reason on this podcast normally. Him himself and Mark <laughs> Carroll and they'll. Um, but you know, who do you see finishing below us like that? Like, when you think when you put it like that, I mean, that's the you've problem. Got, you've got maybe draw it, and I think draw it are actually another team that are very good. I actually think they're really good. I just think that again, mm-hmm. they haven't got off to the greatest of starts. But like, like we keep saying, we don't have a UCD this year, and that's not being disrespectful. We don't have a Finn Harps, mm-hmm. you know, we don't have these teams that you know everybody now should be in the Premier Division. These teams should be in, you know, these are Premier Division clubs, and you know, unfortunately, you know, like Nile says. You know, if if, if when you say if we're talking of draw it, well, it's draw will go and win tomorrow night, and we do, and Pat's beat us, not Pat Shelburne. You know, mm-hmm. we're in serious danger. We cut adrift there. You know, yeah. like like it, it is. You know, and I know we're only half a dozen seven games in the, at the end of the month there, but yeah, look, I wouldn't. I don't think you'd like to be thinking like that. But it, 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 you know, I, you nearly don't want to mark this game. You didn't like to play another Premier Division game next year, like, instead of instead of worrying yeah. about to mark this game. But yeah, it, it's a real worry. Um, I think yeah. Now, yeah. having Waterford and Galway so far up, though, as well, newly promoted yeah, teams, says that, a lot about the strength, doesn't it? That doesn't surprise me either, guys. I mean, I think we, we, we all kind of predicted, I think, that we, we obviously we saw Galway up close and personal in the Cup last last season <laughs> and Waterford season prior. I mean, I think, yeah. you know, both those teams coming up, we always felt were going to be a lot more competitive than the teams that, that they replaced mm-hmm. uh, UCD and Cork City in, in, this, in, in this regard. Like Andrew just said there, I mean, it was always a concern from for a lot of teams, not just on Dock, for a lot of clubs in that league. You look at like the Bows and Sligos and Drogheda and teams like that. The big concern was was that, you know, you look at the league in the last couple of seasons, you had Cork, you know, um, last season, UCD, Finn Harps, the season before that, Longford Town, the season before that. Like, let's face it, with the greatest respect of those teams, they were uh, cannon fodder, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. to be fair. And everyone was just beating those teams, and they were keeping maybe other teams, you know, above the the, the power pit, like you know. So, yeah. I think um, the big concern is that we don't have that this year. You, you can't really confidently say, look at that table and say, like, who's going to finish tenth or who's going to finish ninth. You, you can't confidently say it. I mean, Bows were one of the teams we were kind of thinking might get sucked down now, but they've got a big win tonight against Derry City. Yeah, you know, massive. Okay, new manager bounce and all that stuff. I get that, but I mean. It's, a, it's points on the board is ultimately what counts. And Waterford, Galway, absolutely do not see them getting relegated. Nope. Um, Sligo, who I thought would be a lot, maybe have less points than they have at this moment, mm-hmm. have six at the minute. So, you know, Shamrock Rovers and Pats, you know, you, you'd obviously expect those two teams to push away and finish in the upper echelons of the league by the time it finishes. So you're looking at there and it's like, where does it leave you? I mean... Could it be a battle to stay up for the two loud clubs? Like, it, it, yeah, that's it what it looks be. like. It, yeah, it could be. Like it could be. But this is the, this is going to be like last season was ridiculous in terms of you know teams taking points off each other. 
this year it's going to be tenfold. It's going to be like the wacky races this year, I think, because it's, <laughs> it's just going to be. And like, and if I, like Shelburne like pulling away at the top there just shows that. I mean, and <clears> that shouldn't even me. That shouldn't even majorly surprise us. I just think that's the nature of the League of Ireland in the last couple of seasons that it's yeah. going to be like Waterford and Galway in the top four there. I mean, yeah, it's 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 just you know it's it's it, it, it's going to be strap yourselves in kind of territory. I think lads. Yeah, it it, it it just tells you, you know, you need to have your house in order, you need to have everything right, or, you know, the, the teams coming up, Gally, you know, they're, you, you, we're hit this year, like now I said, with full-time professional teams arriving up here, you know, with good backing behind them as well, and, and this is the problem, that if, if you don't have your house in order, you can find yourself sucked into this very, very easily. Yeah, and, and they're not... They're well supported clubs, they're well funded, you know, they're like Galway, you know, are a Premier Division club. I mean, you know, they mightn't have been the last couple of years, Waterford as well. And the signings they've made as well, like Darrell Lee, he's gone there. You forget I forgot Darrell Lee played for Waterford and I seen him going congratulating everybody after the game. Pouring mm. Almond, you know, Galway, you know, Galway got some cracking players. You know, Conor McCormick's one of the best midfielders, CDMs in the league, in the country. Yeah. Never mind for first division, like well fit to play most Premier Division teams. He was superb but, like, at Oriel. Um, yeah, the really good. Yeah, after was, the events, yeah. and like John Coffey, look, him himself and Ollie Hogan play a certain way, but you know what you're going to get, and they're a tough team, tough to break down. We found it out the hard way twice in the last eight months, but you know there was absolutely no chance them teams were going to come up and waste that opportunity to go down. They spent well, they've invested well, they've got good backing, um, and like in fairness, now on paper so do we, but have we used it well enough? We don't know. We we'll probably need mm-hmm. another. Like, I mean, we look at Bowes. Bowes are now seven points ahead of us and they're already on a new manager and they're looking mm. for one. So that's that's worrying, you know. Like, we're, yeah. we're you know, we've got we're the lowest in the league at the minute. Um, I still, I don't, I know, uh, Colin at Mullen had put up a uh, comment about, you know, um, I think we'll, yeah, we'll get to that one after, yeah. But, um, you know, I think over the next couple of weeks, I think the next, I, I honestly think first of all, I think that that game and loud, I think we're on a really tough few weeks i think it's a vital few weeks now coming up um over easter and it's not even weeks they're only talking two weeks away hmm. i think it's vital that we get some points on the board because if we don't i think we're looking at it's, we, have, we, we, can have it, we can have a chat about where we kind of go on this international break and and with those fixtures ahead i think just we'll wrap up for the match here tonight and um, which are man of the match niall i'll go to you first who, who stood out for you tonight um, I think there was in Dundalk's like in fairness, there was a few performances tonight that were quite good. I mean, obviously I've mentioned Sam Durant. Um, you know, Sam Durant played really well. I thought real creative outlet. Um, mm-hmm. you know, Scott High, you know, done simple things okay in midfield, you know, with that being superb. Archie Davis has, you know, had a rough couple of weeks of late, you know, probably probably, you know, probably a product of product of the of, of the environment more than anything else, but was a lot better tonight, um, but I just thought I just take the back the the, the two centre halves, and I know Mark has Louis Anzi there who was superb, but I'm going to go, but I'm going to go for as uh, Zach Johnson as man the match tonight. I just thought, um, yeah. you know, for for a debut in difficult circumstances, you know, it was a very sort of subdued atmosphere. You felt like things could get very toxic if we conceded a goal, and um, I thought he handled himself really really well. Um, you know, considering he hadn't played alongside. Louis Ansley before and hadn't played in a lily white shirt before. So for mm-hmm. me, it's a, a, a Zach Johnson um, man the match for me tonight. Gally? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I agree with everything Niall said. Um, you know, debut, you know, he's come in as well. I think he's, he was one of the last, was he the last signing we made? He was signing like literally he, two I days believe before. He was, yeah. I'm open to correction, but I think he was. Yeah, yeah. I think he was. Um, but I'm going for his partner in crime. I think Louis was outstanding tonight. I, that, don't get me wrong, Zach was brilliant, but I just felt it was a game Louis needed because the jury was out on him and it's been out on him for a while, whether he's you know he should be playing mm-hmm. left back, centre back. He got the captain's armband tonight. I think he rose to think it suits him. Yeah, he was brilliant. Um, mm-hmm. But there's not a lot between it, but just because I, I just felt he was just that little bit of come, read the game really well. Again, yeah. the vocality of him. Yeah, I'm, I'm not by much, but I'm, I'm going to go for Louis on it. So it's down to you, Chris. Apologies, but I had Louis before we started. But yeah, no, I, I okay. Yeah. If if I do a quick add up, right, I'd think there's eight for Zach Johnson, and I think there's about six for Louis Ansley, and then maybe another four for Archie Davis tonight. Yeah, a couple of Davis, so yeah. it, I'm not surprised they're all in. They're all in the all in the back four. I wish someone just should have put in 
for for Hayden Muller there just to balance us out. So we had everybody in it. Actually, you know, and to be fair, Monroe got got one or two we nods yeah, there yeah, for just no. being a lot more solid. Yeah, I think the um, second half weren't as good yeah, as the well. Monroe. I could say after the first half, when when I got the half time, I assumed Monroe. I was already thinking of the pizza. I think Monroe was going to get it, but then the two boys were just yeah. fantastic. Um. <sighs> Now, lads, uh, for me, and I, I mentioned it very early as well tonight, Gally, that, you know, just Zach Johnson coming in, only 19, and, and just so assured, so solid in, in, in that defence tonight. He just kind of really stood out for me. Um, probably being coached along um, by Louis, I would say, tonight, probably in the air of him a fair bit. Um, so I'm going to go with the majority um, on this tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that's that sums it that sums it all up then um right let me pick someone here at random can i stop right here uh johnny lynch johnny lynch is our pizza winner tonight uh so congratulations johnny agree with myself and niall on the pod tonight and um, for zach johnson on your man in the match so gave uh Tony's Pizzeria and I'll shout there and get your 15 inch pizza courtesy of the podcast here um, and thanks for commenting in thanks everybody loads loads of comments again tonight and um, especially for man of the match so and a, a lot more positive tonight as well which is which makes this show a lot easier and um, so Kelly look you, you touched on it there already and um, was Colin Mullen yeah there it is and um, just kind of put in that comment earlier on so does tonight um, give Stephen O'Donnell another few weeks in this? Because we kind of said you probably have to get to the international break and see, assess things where it is. We don't know what sort of a person um, Brian Zivkoff is. Does he is he someone who wants to change? Is he happy with what's there? We don't know. So we thought this was, is definitely a good um, opportunity probably for them to assess and see where we are. It's interesting and um, Niall you probably heard you know like there, there is there is games planned behind closed doors you would yeah. assume probably for for the club as well to get people so uh, you know as far as Stephen O'Donnell's concerned he's he's making plans during during this break as well so um from from your own point of view Gally I'll come to you first because I suppose you kind of touched on it what position do you I think did you see enough there tonight that you know Stephen is is steering this into the right direction we are we're making ourselves harder to beat or was it opposition tonight what what do you think there was something in it tonight there was something definitely in the last 20 minutes i'm not saying the first if you if you just watched the first half and left you'd probably think there'd be no manager at the end of 90 minutes because of what we've seen over the last couple of weeks but there was just something in the crowd tonight that kind of wanted it to happen want you know they were kind of behind him everybody the staff you know they mm. knew they were obviously struggling like i mentioned confidence all that you know the, the mental side of it and I think you would have got a few weeks anyway regardless if we'd have been a bet tonight I think you get a few weeks anyway I, I don't think you know I, I don't think we'll I, I don't think we'll be looking at it just yet but I, I what I said a couple of weeks ago was I think if we if we haven't picked up points now Shells we've got draw to draw to Derby especially where we are now it'd be different if we were you know second and draw to our fifth or sixth you know the fact, the fact that we're now kind of down languishing down there if we're beaten by them the Derry game then afterwards, like Niall says, then you wouldn't have thought Bowes would beat them. So no, and that's the thing. Like you know, it's it's just such it's going to be such a tough league. But Niall, like Niall pointed at the very start of this podcast, he's on his third season now. So you know, you, you got to be looking at it. And unfortunately, we, as much as we love the man and you know, legend at the club, it, it, you have to base it on what's happening. Mm. Like I honestly think everybody wants it to work for him. Like, there's people calling from tonight, even after tonight. You see it all over social media. It's all over Facebook. But as fans, we want him to succeed. But at the same time, you can only give him so much rope. And I think he'll get another couple of weeks, absolutely. And I think the hope is that he turns it around. Mm -hmm. I just think that where we are at the minute, the lack of goals, you know, I, like, you know we, can, we can enjoy that performance tonight, I suppose, nil-nil, the last 20 minutes of action. But we won't be able to do that next week. Like, we can't go right, go to shells, 20 minutes, we're good, let's go again. That's not, like, it's not going to work forever. I honestly think... In a month's time, we'll know either way whether he's going to be there for the end of the season or not, because I think it's a very difficult couple of games coming up. Mm -hmm. um, but at the minute, yeah, I saw enough tonight in the last 20 minutes. I think I honestly think if we had played for another five minutes, if we had got the proper injury time, he could be the score. Like the injury time should have been about six or seven minutes. Oh, yeah, that was, was bizarre. 
yeah, the fight yeah. was only four hours. Myself, yeah. myself and Bar like Barry Landy was beside me, um, and we were calculating ourselves, like and we were saying eight, like seven, possibly even. Well, there's two big injuries at a time, and when yeah, he got four, crazy. I absolutely could not believe when he put four yeah. minutes. I was like, where has he lost the other? Four or five minutes. But even with subs, yeah. they don't think it'd be four. Well, I was going to say, we, yeah. we must have at least four subs tonight, yeah. did we? Yeah. And that's meant to be. Injuries. A couple of stops yeah. injury wise as well. I mean, I don't know. Look, yeah. the officials and the refereeing tonight is probably a. a you probably base a whole podcast on that alone, I'd yeah. say, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, but... Yeah. Don't, don't send Darmin off with, with referees, for God's sake. We'll be here all night. How are you, Darren? Niall, your, your thoughts just on. On, on Stephen O'Donnell and and just the, the you know the feeling around what 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 are you hearing? Yeah, look, there's there's a few things on that. I mean, like Stephen, look, I, I'm with Andrew here. Like we all want Stephen O'Donnell to succeed. That's we're, we're Dundalk supporters, and we're all you know mm -hmm. Stephen O'Donnell's a legend of Dundalk FC as well. So we all want this to work, um, and we all wanted it to work. But you ha but you can't. You know you can't avoid the facts as well do you know what i mean like i mean i was on this podcast last season i mean i felt when there was calls for maybe to go at the end of last season i was kind of you know dissenting that saying like okay it was a bit indifferent last year but i felt that he'd overachieved so much in his first season that he probably had enough credit in the bank to go for a third year we're mm -hmm. in the third season now and you know to say it's been uninspiring is probably a bit of an understatement i'd say you know and um, now it's early doors I, I appreciate it's early doors but you also can't ignore the fact that brian ainscock has already made plenty of changes um in the background and in the, the, the you know the, the background of the club so i think um you know he also made it very clear at the beginning of it in his first press conference that the short-term objective was to qualify for europe um and when he was asked, when he was prompted um, by, another, by another journalist in that press conference, was the budget there to achieve that? He was very prompt in his, like, yes, it's, the budget's there. And we will have a playing squad, budget-wise, that will be able to compete and qualify for Europe. He said he trusts Stephen O'Donnell and Brian Gartland to run the football side of things. Um, so I think there's no issues there. But the results in show have not been good. And, there's no, and the performances have not been good. Um, and I think, you know, it is going to get to a point where there will have to be a situation of stick or twist here. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. when you look at the fixtures that are coming up um, and you look at, you know, the nature of the League of Ireland this year is, you know, look, we don't really know what Brian Innscox is really thinking. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We don't know what his thinking behind it is. There's also the, 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 the subplot of, you know, Bohemians trying to tempt a, former, a certain former manager to their club i mean is that going I, I i don't know i'm just throwing stuff out there would that potentially accelerate a decision from brian Ainscoff? i don't really know i don't want to see Stephen o'donnell lose his job i mean i i i i know stefan was on the podcast a couple of weeks ago you know um he was saying that he was one of his biggest cheerleaders but even he was kind of you know turning i mean i've i've um I've been on the same boat for most of this, but yeah. I mean, I do think also, but I also appreciate for a lot of supporters, it does get to a point of like, when can you stop defending it? Like, can you, can you, can you, and I think like you can't defend the result against Sligo. You can't defend, you know, that like that performance and some of the performances um, of late. But, um, but also like I mean like, you can't like. I just don't know. I mean, like, I, 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 I really don't know. Like, um, it's like you don't want to talk about a man, you know, losing his job. But I mean, no. where do you draw the line? I mean, because ultimately the club's survival and the club's, you know, success is paramount. And I mean, like, I don't know. Is I hope Stephen Donald, I hope Stephen can turn it around. But I think I agree with Andy. It, 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 it's it's a big, 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 big few weeks um, ahead now, and um, because. I don't know. It's 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 um it's it's, it's a tough one. It is one of them, and anybody watching is probably thinking these boys can't make out the win. But you're kind of torn. Like mm. it's not like you know, it's not like it's Trevor Anderson. You know, it's not like it's, yeah. you know, it's we're not we're not going in that road. It's 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 one of those. You're just in that predicament whether a change would be good or not. At yeah. the minute, I would say no. I think another couple of weeks, another couple of games, and we'll see how we go. There was just something about the night. Maybe it was just me. I don't know. But I think the three fixtures. Yeah, I think the three fixtures we mentioned. You know. You know, they're two like Shelburne and Derry at the top end of the league and Drogheda 
just above us on the table at the moment. So it's the best of both worlds, really. So it's a real good barometer to see if we can pull ourselves out of the brown stuff, basically. And I think maybe that would be like, like if we lose to, to Shelburne or say we get thumped by Shelburne in two weeks' time, I think it might start to look a bit ominous. But in fairness to Stephen, I mean, I, 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 he's very self-aware. Like he, he, he's not shied away from. He, he's been asked about this, and even again, it was brought up tonight. I mean, he's very aware of fans, you know, and respects the, the supporters' right to to vent <laughs> in this way. I mean, he understands the nature of the business. You know, um, he understands that managers are going to be under scrutiny. And that's just part of the job, and he knows that. I mean, he's yeah. not daft. Like, he knows if results aren't going our way, Dundalk's a big football club in this country. There's going to be a lot of scrutiny. And there has been a lot of scrutiny, rightly or wrongly. I mean, I think in recent times, probably rightly. Maybe last season and the season before, probably wrongly, in my view. But I think mm-hmm. now of late, I think a lot of people are starting to look at it now and are starting to say, like, where where, where do you stop defending like, and, uh, and and where because like, we need to see some points on the board and, and I said even a bleeding goal would, would 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 put us in better form at the moment and that and like the fact that we're kind of sitting here not not saying we are but we're nearly delighted with a draw against Waterford yeah and you know happy we only lost one nil to um, pass last week in Inchicore to me there are concerns like of something that's much bigger um to come and I mean. Look, I hope Stephen can turn it around, but I think it will get to a point, obviously, as it does with any any manager in any league, in any club, it will obviously get to a point where a decision will have to be made from uh, Mr. Ainscoff. So let's just wait and see. Yeah, but Gally, I think the fact there's not a massive outstanding candidate that we're all talking about as well mm. says says it all. You know, we, we as I said, Niall has mentioned already, There's there's been mentions of Stephen Kenny, but did, does he want to get back into management yet? We don't know. Um, does he want to come back into League of Ireland management? That's that's even another question mm. altogether, you know, from, from where he's been in, in international management. So you're kind of looking at, you know, is there someone domestically who you think you can turn this around? I Personally, I don't think there's an outstanding candidate that's jumping out at me saying, you know, you, you could cash in now and, 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 you know, you could get this guy and so go for it. So the, the, fun, the funny it, thing is, if it was, if there was another manager in place and this was happening, the man you'd ring is Stephen O'Donnell. You know, so mm. that's you know, it's one of those things where you, you you want to give him every opportunity to get this right. And I understand they've signed new players, but everybody has. You know, everybody signed new players, and you, you know, we signed a lot of new players. We probably signed players, maybe. You know, I couldn't help but think tonight. Imagine sending Mullen playing in that team. You know, what would the difference be in the middle of the park? And that's no disrespect to Bradshaw, but maybe players are shining because other players didn't stick around like he thought they thought they were going to be. But mm-hmm. you know, it's, it can't be easy. And um, but he knows more than anybody. If he's worn that jersey, he's captain it. You know, he, he's he's you know, he's been unbelievable. He knows more than anybody you know, what it takes to be successful at that club. And you know, like I say, if it wasn't him in the job now, it's him you'd go knocking for. So, you know, we have to give him the benefit of it. But like Niall says, there's only so long, you know, you you know. And Ainscoff is no dose, you know, he's a businessman, yeah. he's a shrewd operator, that's why he has it. Um, but yeah, look, next couple of weeks, you know, we could see a nice, hopefully see a nice turn of events in the next couple of weeks, because although we're down the bottom, there's a few people not that far in front of us, we just can't let them get away from us. Um, so over the next kind of three, <coughs> three games, maybe, it could be, it could decide what's going to happen for the next 23 yeah, uh, just just when you just when you say players that, that could have been there, that was a John Martin game, wasn't it? To come off the bench oh, and score yeah. like you had done last year. Well, God, you, just you can nearly forget who's on the bench. You're trying to think who can come on now and do something. Yeah. <laughs> he was, he was, he was uh, the super sub at times for us. Um, well, look, lads, I think we've we've probably gone through this one off for a little, little draw. This has gone on, uh, which, as Niall says, probably says a lot about the state of where we are. Um, currently, um, just thanks to everyone, I suppose, for all the comments, all the views in tonight. Uh, you know, numbers are, are rocketing up on the podcast of late. So, thanks everyone for all the interaction. And um, thanks as always to Tony's Pizzeria for our pizza giveaway, Player Fit for our merchandise, and of course, uh, Dundalk Village for our overall sponsorship um, and Donald Green for that, for the podcast to keep it operational. Niall, thanks for jumping in as a super sub tonight. No uh, always really really appreciate that um i suppose we got a bit of a break for for a while lads we can we can enjoy that um, and bask in the glory bask in the glory of a break i'm in Tallis stadium tomorrow so no break for me 
<laughs> yeah. So, uh, look, I suppose the fact that we have the break where um, we've finally kept a clean sheet, there's something to build on. Can that be the platform to kick on in these next crucial three games? Only time will tell, I suppose. And until that time, come on the turn. <laughs>